My name is Bob Conti, and I've been a touring musician on the road for over 30 years. It's been a really great experience. I've seen the world and collected an amazing amount of memories and stories. Oh, the stories I could tell you and will tell you. Some you'd probably never believe, but we'll get to that. My job as host of this show is to simply try to help my friends remember all of the insanity that they've seen and done over their many years on the road. So, if you've ever wondered what happens in the dressing room and at the hotel before or after the show, and what really happens on the road, stay with us and find out. It's a glamorous life. In this episode of Road Stories, we begin by joining Jose Feliciano live via satellite on the road. Later, he's going to join us here in the studio. Thank you for joining us, Jose. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you with us. How long have you been on the road? God, I've been on the road for uh, quite a bit. Okay. Quite a bit. Many, many years. And I'm still on the road. Jose, what was it like suddenly being a star, top of the charts, having people chase after you and get next, just to get next to you? What was that like? Well, it was, uh, it, was, it was good for a while, but when you got locked up in a room and you can't go anywhere because uh, the female fans are screaming and they want, they want a part of you, uh, it, uh, it can get, uh, it can get uh, a little depressing because I like to go out. I like to be amongst people. Do you remember your first tour and what that was like? Um, well, my first tour really was... Uh, the coffee house circuit in uh, in the 60s we got caught in snowstorms um, driving to Chicago for example uh, to Cleveland Detroit uh, those gigs were kind of uh, horrendous because we had to drive to them uh, we could have flown but uh, it was much easier to drive then Jose have you got any funny road stories for us any cute things well Bob I'll tell you one story that you've always, you've been around me when I've done this uh, sometimes we'll go into a restaurant and a waitress will say, would you like to see a menu? And I say, lady, I'd like to see anything. <laughs> or when I'm in a plane, I'll pick up the, um, the card and uh, I'll pretend to be reading it. And people who know me will say, will probably think to themselves, no, Jose, Jose isn't really blind. I mean, look, he's reading the card, oh, yeah. you know. Or I'll read the magazine and look at uh, certain parts of it, you know. Uh, I, I do strange things, but I, I, I do it to amuse myself and put people at ease. Have you got any road stories about when you first got started, that folk scene, that whole thing? I remember when I was still playing the folk circuit, I played at a place in Baltimore called the Blue Dog Cellar. And the guy had never, had never hired me or heard of me. And I started playing the guitar off key and everything before I went on stage. And the guy was like, like, oh shit, you know, <laughs> I, I really shouldn't have hired this guy. What am I doing? <laughs> and then, you know, I went on stage and I did a great show, but he comes up to me after the show and he says, you know, when you were playing the guitar like that, I was really worried. I, 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 I was thinking, oh my God, what have I hired here, you know? Jose, any bizarre stories on the road that you remember? Vampirella comes to mind. We were invited in Germany to this peep show and there was this lady by the name of Vampirella, who did some really strange things that we can't go into. <laughs> but the thing was, she, uh, uh, when they would introduce her, they had this music like the Peter Gunn theme. And, and now, und, now, Vampirella. And I was shocked at what I saw. I really was. Well, and people had told me that in the Reaperbahn, uh, expect that kind of thing. Did you ever have any scandals? The only scandal I ever had was with the Star Spangled Banner because I performed it with soul and I did it my way as opposed to uh, doing it um, uh, the way that it was written. And that was actually the pretty, uh, the biggest scandal that I ever had. Of course now uh, everybody does the Star Spangled Banner in the way that they want to do it. But I started a movement, you know. Oh. I did make history, but uh, kind of in some ways hurt myself in the process because uh, when that happened, radio stations around the country stopped playing my music. And uh, it's taken me a long, long time to dig out of that situation. I think the thing that helped me the most was uh, Chico and the Man, uh, the music that I wrote for that series. 
that helped me a lot. Uh, but you know, radio is uh, different now too. So um, I think that was the biggest scandal that I ever had. How many Grammys do you have? Uh, well, you know, I have a total of six Grammys. We're, I'm trying to work on the seventh, but it seems to elude me. But, um, you know, I count my blessings. I think that um, winning six Grammys for a kid from Puerto Rico who never thought he would win anything or do anything, let's say, except be... I always knew that I would be a great musician. That I knew. But I never knew that I would be famous and, and doing what I'm doing. Everyone who travels with you knows that come hell or high water, you do the gig. Whether you're sick, you're not sick, you're like a soldier, you do the gig. Well, in South America, you know, as you know, I was very, I was ill. I had a, a high fever. You didn't miss one show. No, because uh, my theory is that as long as you can walk and, and still, even if you're hoarse or whatever, if you can perform, you owe it to the people because it's not the audience's fault that you're sick. They pay their money to come see you, and, uh, and it's important that you do that. Uh, for me, uh, the audiences, the, the fans are very important. I owe them everything I have. I think sometimes uh, the artists of today, these young kids, lose concept of that. Uh, they have so many bodyguards that the people can't shake their hand, they can't touch them. They're untouchables. and. Uh